Welcome back to Settle in Spain. I'm Amanda. It's me and my husband David and our dog Otis here in southern Spain in the mountains of Andalusia. Welcome back those of you who have been following us for a while and for everybody who's new thank you for joining us and I hope you'll subscribe. So this week then uh, we take a little drive across from Los Surecos to Chiravel and we get some essential building equipment. You can find out what we think is essential if you carry on watching for a bit. We also do some preparation for winter despite the fact that we've been having an amazing heat wave for, I think it lasted for three weeks in the end, uh, we started preparing for winter and that was over at the rental house. We don't yet know when we're going to be moving in here so we're kind of hedging our bets there a little bit. There's more clearing that goes on from upstairs. Uh, there was issues with the stairwells that we have. It's not easy to get larger things up and down from there so we needed to get some pieces out in a different way in these bulky items down from upstairs. You can see what we found and, and some, some of the last finds really in the house. We also start to clear the land. Um, as many of you know, we've got uh, several thousand square meters with lots of olive trees and it's gonna take a lot of work for us to clear it because it's not been looked after very well for a very long time. So we start clearing that and you can start to see what the land looks like. There's also a bit of fun with Otis at the end. Okay, enjoy this week and I'll see you next time. This week begins with David back and we went and bought some second-hand scaffolding. A couple that we'd met a few weeks earlier let us know that somebody they knew over in the village or near the village of Serecos had some scaffolding that they no longer needed and it's something we're going to really need to reach those high ceilings. So we took a drive out and as you can see it's a beautiful area. Otis enjoys the drive in the car, looking at everything around, but that plain up above us in Oria, uh, the Shirovel plain they call it, is really beautiful and very fertile as well. There's lots of hay growing at the moment and other things going on. So thank you very much Tony and Maxine for letting us know about that. It was soon the weekend again and I was busy working online while David was busy cutting up wood. Yes, it was the middle of a heat wave and he was outside with the chainsaw cutting wood. Thanks to another couple of friends, uh, Myra and Bill, who no longer need it and gave it to us. So we're starting to build up that log pile ready for winter. Thanks guys. For those of you who are new to the channel, this is up at the rental property where we're currently living. It's around 14 kilometers from the house that we're renovating, but we're not entirely sure yet when we're going to be moving in there. So we're stacking these logs for winter just in case, but we're also fully aware that we may have to move them. Let's wait and see. One of the great things about being in the rental is that we can do the everyday things like hanging out the washing and not being in the middle of a building site. Uh, and the washing here you can see is attached to a linden tree. And this linden tree is amazing right now. Just look at that blossom. Linden is amazing to collect and put into teas and it's supposed to be very good for your health. Unfortunately, we were really busy and by the time I got back to the tree to collect some flowers to dry, to put into tea, they'd all finished. 
and the patio was full of them. But what I'll do now is I'll turn down the volume and you can just listen to the bees. And yes, linden trees are on our list of things to plant at our new house. Back at the house, it's time to do some more clearing, this time from upstairs. There are some larger pieces that would not fit down the stairs themselves, but luckily we had that door right at the top and we could just drop things down. Dave handed them down and I was at the bottom. Luckily we did have that pulley there and made use of that. Uh, we did just before doing this actually pick up a block and tackle in that centre aisle in Lidl but we didn't need it for these. It's ready for when we do need it to get furniture back in there in the future. There's one other upstairs room that we hadn't yet cleared. At the end of this room, which is above what was the kitchen diner and is going to be our utility and bathroom, you can see there's the entrance to a room. But the only access to that at the moment is off the patio upstairs. And in that room, there is a really wide variety of oddments to do with farming. shoes with a cross ply tire sole. Isn't that fantastic? Brilliant. <laughs> don't look like they've ever been worn. No. No. <laughs> Circa. Hmm? No idea how old. Erica, no. <laughs> no say. No say. Of course, the only way to get anything down from up there was down those stairs, which are very steep and dangerous. So I handed everything down to David at the bottom, including these ladders. Then everything we kept went over to the warehouse and everything we didn't went to the bulk of rubbish day, thanks to the trailer. So it's Sunday, I've been editing some of the latest video for you and realised there were some bits missing. I don't know what happened to the recording, but it's not there. And it was about the stuff that we took out of that very top room uh, where we were handing down those great big ladders. You can see there's one of them behind me here. So we found some beautiful old pots. Just stunning. There's a selection of about half a dozen different sizes and shapes. <clears throat> excuse me, different sizes and shapes. Some of them have even got lids. They're not perfect, they've got chips, they've got cracks, but I think they're lovely, so we're keeping them. The other thing is this. We have no idea what it is. It just looks like a stick, doesn't it? And it is a very long stick, but on the end of it, 
is this thing. How bizarre is that? It has, the edge has, has clearly been chamfered. There's this bit here that's like the handle. It's almost like the handle of a saw. So maybe you could hold it like that and do something. But you're not going to saw a piece of wood with it. Does anybody know what this might be for? We would really like to know. Clearly a farming implement of some description, but we have no idea what it is. So, if you know, please do comment below. In the past, people have been fantastic about commenting and letting us know about the things we're finding here. This is one I'd really like to know what it is. Thank you, guys. Next up, Dave began what will be a very long task of strimming the land. So, in the middle of a heat wave, we've come out in the late afternoon to pick up glass off the land. Yes, that's right, glass. There's bottles and jars in all sorts of strange places, underneath trees. Excuse my glasses falling off. Sweaty face. Um, along with lots of other rubble. The rubble is going to take a lot longer to deal with. Right now, we're just sorting out the glass because, of course, that has the ability to be dangerous in this heat and the sun and could cause a fire. We have over 50 olive trees on the land. This is the edge of our property next to a small rambler. There's also a few almond trees and we had to check underneath every single one. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Ring, ding, 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 ding. Do you think that was um, somebody throwing away his wife's jar collection? <laughs> I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if someone's done this before, but as it's not their land, all they've done is move it away from where the tractor went through and they've just moved it to the bottom of the trees. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Otis came with us as we went around the land checking underneath the trees. He loves to have a good sniff around. There you can see one of the piles of rubble that we need to sort in the future. In places we've even got big pieces of metal coming out out of the land. It's going to take time. These thistles have been amazing. They have the most beautiful great big purple flowers and have been really attractive for bees. But we have got to be careful. They're spreading and they need to be controlled. The thing Otis didn't seem to like very much though was walking on the grass where it had actually been strimmed. Very strange, he was happy everywhere else. Yeah. 
It's amazing to see how much the land is changing as the seasons change. We're learning as we go along and making plans, which we'll share with you really, really soon. Although the olive trees had been really badly neglected, it was wonderful to see that there's new olives already on them. And here is part of the stash of the glass that we found underneath the trees that day. Okay, right, so, we're in the middle of a bit of a heat wave, as you can see, I'm a, a little bit on the warm side. I don't know what the temperature is today, but it'll be um, about, about 40. I mean, nothing to get too stressed about, but um, yeah, we're gonna be doing limited things over the next few days. One of the things we are gonna do is we're gonna have a look at our well. This is one of two wells on the property, and it was one of the things that attracted us to the property in the first place. We've got quite a high water table here. It's not very far down at all easily accessible to get the water out. This one's been rigged up with an electric pump, which we spoke about um, a little while ago, uh, didn't we? Yes, I think we did, yeah, we spoke we about did. it. Yeah. Um, and it's a bit of a Heath Robinson affair, but it works. So what we're gonna do is get some water out there now. And first of all, we plug the pump in. <laughs> <laughs> the line goes across there. Well, that's where the power goes in. Yeah. But the water comes out of this pipe here. And um, well, all I can find to put water in this is this old thing here. Nice. What I'll do is I'll just give it a jug a bit of a wash. I'll give it a pre-test to test to see if it's worth testing. Mm. <laughs> right, there we go. Okay. okay, here's the water quality test kit that I managed to get my hands on. Um, I just got, got this off the Tinder web and it tests for 16 different water contaminants. Um, all sorts of things, chloride, copper, hydrogen sulfide, iron, nitrate, blah, blah, the pH, total chlorine, bacteria, lead, pesticides. We could ask the Ayunta, Ayunta Miento to check the wine for us, to check the water for us. <laughs> the wine. Check the wine. Um, but we just fancy doing this test ourselves and I don't think it, it can't be too complex, can it? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it can be too complex actually. There's a multitude of tests and swabs and all sorts of things and it's, it's just disassembling itself in my very hands. So, I think what we're going to be doing with this is I'm going to be going back to the UK to do a bit of work and Amanda can sort all of this out. <laughs> but I'm going to be very interested to see what the, uh, what the final results are. Yeah, that actually looks reasonably complicated. There's a lot of individual tests that you need to do. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's a lot of tests on there. So, yeah, we'll do that another day with that water that I've just got out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All too soon it was time to take David back to the airport at Alicante and on the way back there was a thunderstorm. This is on the road near to Velez Rubio and it was really quite heavy in places along here. Though it cleared as I got towards Oria and it wasn't raining when I arrived back at the rental but as soon as I got into the house the heavens opened and we enjoyed the rain we noticed. We are just north of the driest region of Europe, not that far from the Tabernus Desert, so every time we get rain, we really appreciate it. Hey. 
I know that some friends in other places in Europe, like France, had some horrendous thunderstorms with serious damage caused, so we were lucky that this one just brought us rain. Coming up next week then, I'm going to be doing those water tests for you and we'll find out what's in that well water. Water that is going to be so important for our plans going forward for the land and the house. And after the storm, beautiful blue skies again. The sand and the dust and the heat in the air had completely disappeared and it was beautiful and fresh in the morning. I'm going to leave you this week with Otis having fun. One of the things David brought home with him this time was a laser measure, which we've bought to help us with the process of sorting things out going forward in the house. And it turned out Otis had never seen a laser before. And I only thought cats like lasers, but this was hysterical. Thank you for joining us this week. I hope that you've enjoyed our little journey and that you'll be with us again next week to see how much progress we're starting to make over at the house. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to do so and hit that bell button so you're notified when our next video comes out. We don't have a regular schedule at the moment, but we hope to have one soon. See you next time.